everyone. Welcome to STEM class, our remote STEM class. It's Mr. Dowd here. So I've been uh, getting a couple questions in almost every one of my uh, specials classes today about uh, submitting your videos for, uh, from Screencastify. Okay, so I'm going to go over a couple of ways to do that. So the first way would be directly on Google Classroom. All right, so if you go to classwork, say this is the assignment I want to post it in. Go to view assignment. It's now going to go to add or create. All right, click on there. Go to your Google Drive. Okay. So you can, if you've recently um, touched or recently opened up your your uh, screencast file will be down here. Okay, but you can also go to upload and click it if it's saved. It depends on where, where it had saved to, um, but most time the default is to your drive, okay? So if you'd saved it onto your own computer, it'd be going onto here, okay? But it should be under your drive is where it should save to, okay? Then you just click on it, you press insert, and then you gotta say marked as done once that's done loading or it's start turned in. And that is one way you can put in, or sorry, turn in your Screencastify, okay? The other way is say when you go on to, or I can get to that screen in a second, in the full way, is by clicking up here, go to these four, or is it three lines so more options button and go to your recordings okay so these are all the videos I've taken so all, all the ones you've taken will be on here too so you click on there so what I've noticed is a lot of people are just clicking on this copy shareable link oh sorry first you gotta record it, or save it um, by naming it properly and it'll save and then that'll say untitled at whatever day it is. Okay. Ooh. Sorry, I was playing what I already had done. <laughs> so, if we go over to here to copy shareable link, you don't want to touch that. Okay. Because that's just going to make a link that you can copy. But since you're using a school email, it won't automatically um, allow the teacher to. Um, that's what I'm looking for. Open it up, okay, because of certain um, parental controls that are on your accounts. You're also not going to go to share, okay, because if you share the classroom, it'll automatically go ahead and post it directly to the stream of whatever class you're trying to get to, okay? Well, it won't do it right on your um, assignment. Okay, so you don't want to do that. You're not going to publish it to YouTube. All right, you could download it, download or exp export as MP4, and then go ahead and it'll go back onto here as an up file to upload. The other way that I think is personally the easiest is if you see this button that says more options, click on that, and then press the view in uh, on drive button. Okay, go ahead, click on that. And then you see these three dots. Now click on those three dots to see more, uh, more actions. And then you can press the share button. Okay. And then you can go ahead and type in whatever teacher's email you want. Okay. So if I'm sending it to Mrs. Fairburn, I would type, click that, and then press send. Make sure you type, uh, click on that, or we won't get a notification that you shared it with us. Okay. Because it'll automatically go into onto our drive. So I go to my drive. It'll automatically show up on um, shared with me. Okay. But if you don't click on that dot, don't click on that. We won't know. Okay. And just as a reminder, all of your teacher's emails are their first name dot last name at lawrence.k12.ma.us. Okay.
Now remember, we were looking at the artwork of Alexis Diaz. He's a muralist from Puerto Rico. These are some images of his work. We talked about his influence um, from Salvador Dali and other surrealist painters. I had asked you guys to start drawing what looks like a city block. So we're using two vanishing points, so it's a, a two-point perspective drawing, and we're making it look like a city block corner. And then we're going to add our mural to the wall. So it looks kind of like Alexis Diaz was there maybe painting one of his murals. So I did ask you guys to create an image of two animals. Remember, combining two animals. So there's that metamorphosis happening where he has a horse's head and then he becomes more of like a duck. So I morphed a horse and a duck. So you guys should have a sketch of some sort of morphed animal that looks like two animals mixed together, similar to Alexis Diaz with his elephant and octopus. OK, so hopefully you were able to draw your two-point perspective of a city block. Maybe you have something similar to this. Maybe you're still working on it. OK, I'm going to continue with my drawing. And just remember that you're going to need a pencil, a ruler, and that paper. Your vanishing point is going to help guide you when you're making any diagonal lines. So I used my vanishing point on this side to create the line here, here, and on top of the door. OK? Now, I want to look at my metamorphosis here of my horse and duck. And I'm going to add it to this wall so it looks a little bit like Alexis Diaz and one of his murals. So what I want to do is I want to create the look of this part of the body going off into space. So I'm actually going to draw this a little bit smaller over here. And then the horse's head is going to be very large right here. And that's going to create the illusion or the appearance of this drawing going back into space. So whatever you drew for your metamorphosis, your two animals together, you want to make it a little bit smaller and it's kind of squished here. And then you're going to make it really large on the left. OK? And in the end, that should give it the appearance of really being on that wall. OK? So I'm just going to start by doing the duck half of my creature. But as I come over to the left side, it's going to get larger. I'm going to make it look larger. And that horse, the horse part, is going to be very large. I think I'm going to erase that line there. But I still need to add those feet. So maybe this foot can be coming out looking large because it's in the foreground. And this foot maybe looks a little smaller to give it the appearance of going back into space. So you guys can go ahead and finish working on your city block corner. Start adding your morphed animal there. And I did these like little lines for his mane. So there he is. You can continue to add details on this side as well. You can add windows to, on your door or some detail to that window there. And another thing you might want to do, using your ruler, I'm going to make this part of the building end right here. So what I'm going to do is just make two vertical lines. I'm going to erase these two lines. And then I'm going to use my ruler and the vanishing point over here to create the illusion of space and depth on this side. So I'm lining my ruler up with the vanishing point here, and I'm placing it right on this corner where I want to create the look of a wall kind of going back behind this building. And you can shade it in, add a little shading to increase the, the illusion, if you will, 
of, of creating space. All right, guys. So go ahead and add your little metamorphosis creature to your wall. So it looks like a large mural. And you can, oh, I forgot to do this too. We're going to add a sidewalk because I think it helps to create the illusion of this being a city block. So you're going to use your ruler and you're going to use the vanishing points. OK, you're going to place your ruler. Make sure it's touching the vanishing point over here. And you're just going to make a nice straight line that ends below this mark, that little dot. Do the same thing on this side. Make sure your ruler is up against that vanishing point, And then you're going to create a line coming down. OK, now the next step is to create little cracks in the sidewalk. And I want to show you something. When you add your little cracks, I'm just placing the ruler horizontally on my paper. And right about there where that point is, I'm going to make a horizontal line here and a horizontal line here. I'm going to continue to go back. But as I go further back, I'm going to have these lines be a little closer together. So right here, I can have them a little bit further apart. But as I go kind of up on my picture plane here, backwards, I'm going to start to make these lines a little closer together. And that's going to help to create the illusion of this sidewalk being in the correct perspective and making it look like it's going back into the distance. So I don't know if you notice that each time I make a new line, they're getting a little closer together. And that's going to help to create that illusion that we want of this sidewalk going back into space. Just give it your best try. And if you don't like the first one you make, you can always practice and try again. I'm sure that when Alexis Diaz was a youngster, he, he probably made some mistakes along the way. But now, he's pretty amazing. So try your best. You can just use a pencil for this project. If you want to color it in later, you can. And you can certainly add as much detail to this city block as you want to. You could make people walking by. You can have signs in the window or a little like a, the name of a store or something that you want to have. It's really up to you. Good luck. Good morning, Gators. Who's in the mood for pancakes for breakfast? Do I see those virtual hands, right? Okay, I want to show you how to make some pancakes. You can buy the actual batter in the store and just add water. Um, but this is this quick where you would make it more from scratch, which is very easy to do. So you just need, read the directions on the back. Okay. So you need two cups of this. Take it right out. Use your measuring cup, remember. Make sure that <clears throat> it's at the level. You don't want to go too much. If you have trouble leveling it to two cups, you can always Take a knife or a spoon and just go like this. Okay. So I have two cups of the Bisquick. I need two eggs. Remember cracking your eggs. And be very careful. And then you want one cup of milk. Can be any kind of milk. If you want your pancakes to be thinner, you can add more milk or a little bit more milk. Some people like thick pancakes, some people like them thinner. I personally prefer mine to be thin, but I'll see what the batter looks like. So when you're mixing it all in, you want to make sure you get all the lumps out. Nobody likes a lumpy batter from pancakes. Then you taste this stuff, taste the actual um, mix, right? So mix 
come through. So yeah, so you're gonna mix the egg in, make sure all the yellow is in so you don't see the egg. All the lumps are out. Okay, so it should look like this. Notice I'm scraping the bottom to get off all the extra dry batter. Okay, it should be nice and smooth. I'm gonna add a tiny bit more milk because I like them a little bit thinner. And you can add um, blueberries to this. If you were gonna add blueberries or chocolate chips, this would be the time to do it after you mix your batter. So I'm going to add a little bit of chocolate chips, just a tiny bit. Maybe I should measure it for you. Let's try this. quarter cup. Actually, that's kind of a lot, but let's see what it looks like. You see a very tiny chocolate chips from when we made the yogurt last week. Okay, so this is a quarter cup. Okay, I'm going to put those in. That's not too much, see? You don't want to put too much because then it's like all chocolate. And it might wreck the pancake. So it just goes a little bit. You do blueberries, same thing. So I did a quarter cup of chocolate chips and it's like nothing. Okay. Very little chocolate chips. Okay, so now I'm gonna pour it into a pan on the stove and show you how you know when it's done, okay? Making a mess here, but remember you always clean up your mess. You don't want mom and dad to get mad. Okay. So I'm gonna spray the pan again with Pam. Spray the pan with Pam. And I'm going to pour a little bit of the batter into the pan once it gets warm. And then I will show you as it's cooking how you know it's done, how you know when it's time to flip it. Okay, so I poured some of the batter into the pan. So right now it's cooking. I just used this spoon to do it. I just maybe filled up a little bit of it, poured it in. I only did one right now so I could show you how it cooks. And it's on like a medium to high heat because you don't want it to burn. So what are you gonna look for? You're gonna look for bubbly. It's gonna bubble in the middle and you're gonna look for the ends to get a little more firm, okay? So you don't want to flip it too soon. If you flip it too soon, it's going to fall apart. So you want it to be nice and golden brown on the other side. So while we are waiting, I'm going to give you a little trivia question. Did you know that the word breakfast is actually from the word fast, breaking a fast? So when you sleep all night, like let's say you go to bed at, at 10 and wake up at 8, or let's say you wake up at seven because you have school. That's like nine hours. You haven't eaten in nine hours, so that's like fasting. When you fast, you don't eat for a long period of time. And you are going to break that fast with breakfast. So that's why it's one of the most important meals of the day. Okay, but you didn't know that. And if you did, more power to you. But, all right, so. Back to our pancake. It's starting to firm up here. All right. So now I'm going to flip it. I'm going to try to flip it while I'm holding my phone so you can see. Actually, you know what? I, well, I can try to do it. Ready? One, two, three. Yay! Okay, so I'm pushing it down because I like my pancakes flat. Notice you still see the, I like them, I don't like them thick. I like them thin. So, um, you notice you see the chocolate chips, there's not that many, they're just kind of, you know, sp scattered and it's golden brown on this side, okay? And at this point you can start to smell, how good it smells. Now this batter is going to make, ooh, probably about six or seven pancakes, if not more. Depends how big you want them. Um, 
So you don't even have to, you, I'm just gonna cover that up and put it in the fridge and whoever wants them next can have them, okay? So I'm gonna flip it again, just to be sure. There we go. It's nice and golden brown. You don't really see the, the chocolate chips on this side, but they're still there. Okay, they're still there, see? So this one's done, so I'm gonna shut off the stove and I'm gonna put it on a plate. Okay, so <clears throat> here's your finished product. I put a little bit of butter on it so it melt in. Okay. And then just a little bit. You don't have to have syrup. You could have uh, jam or you could eat them plain. I put it on the side because I like to dip my pancake in and not have too much syrup. But you can also put it all over the pancake. Just don't go nuts because there's a lot of sugar in syrup. And there you go. You have a nice party breakfast. Breaking the fast. Remember that it could be a, a trivia question for next week. Have a great day. Bye. Hey Gators, welcome to Language and Play. So today we're going to talk about environments, okay? Where a story could take place and how we interact with those environments, all right? So we're going to do that by playing a game. This is called the environment game. What you're gonna do is you're gonna make pretend that you're in different environments. And you're actually gonna get up, you're gonna move, you're gonna get your body going a little bit as if you're in these different places, okay? First environment is just gonna be literally walking to school. So how would you walk to school, okay? Just walking normally, do you have a backpack? Do you have a little swag on when you're walking, right? How do you walk to school? Let me see you walk. Oh, come on, you can walk better than that. Oh, there you go, that's good, right? So you're just kind of walking normal, walking it out, right? Okay, freeze. Now we're gonna change the environment. So now, you are gonna be walking to school through a desert. So what I want you to think about is, all right, now I have a brand new environment. How am I gonna walk and move in a desert? I mean, look around me. There's nothing out there except for sand. And it's really hot. So I'm not gonna be walking as fast. My shoulders are gonna start to slump a little bit. I'm gonna look tired. I'm gonna be wiping my brow. I'm really walking really slow. Okay, freeze. Now we're gonna do a new environment, okay? We're gonna be walking to school again, only this time we're walking through the snow. <sighs> Notice how I'm picking my feet up a little higher because when I'm walking through snow, it's harder to walk. I'm not walking as smooth as before. It's really cold. So maybe I put my hands in my pockets. I feel a little bit stiff. You can see even my voice sounds like I'm a little, little bit cold, right? And I can feel that in my whole body. I feel cold. Freeze. Now we're gonna try a new one, okay? This time, oh no. Somehow I ended up in this creepy forest. So now I'm gonna be walking very slow, but I'm gonna be very attentive to everything around me. And I wanna make sure that while I'm moving, I'm moving very quiet so I don't wake up anything scary. Ha, <laughs> gotcha, freeze, all right? New environment. This time, we are going to be walking on hot lava. Ah! Oh, 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 it's hot. Oh, it's hot. Oh, ow. Right? You probably pick up your feet. You get moving a lot faster. Freeze. All right. And our last one. <laughs> this is a fun one. Look where I am. The surface of the moon. <laughs> See, very light gravity. I'm kind of bouncing around, right? Freeze. So with all these different environments, your body interacts with the environment in different ways. What I want you to start doing is think about the environment where you created your starry night. It could be anywhere, okay? It doesn't have to be in the world of reality. But to bring that environment alive, you have to start thinking about how you're gonna use your body to create the illusion of where you are. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you.
Hey guys and girls, welcome back to Virtual PE. I'm Misty Amin, and as you can see, I'm alone here today because we have a little technical difficulties. We only have one microphone. So after your workout yesterday, that hot upper body workout, we're gonna stretch today. We're gonna get those muscles in the upper body stretched. I'm gonna do a few, and then I'm gonna turn it over to Ms. Reedy, and she's gonna finish you off, okay? Now you, should, you might be a little bit sore up in your pectoral muscles, in your shoulders, okay, your biceps. So we're gonna get that all stretched out today, get you nice and loose, and have you give you a little, little day off, and then tomorrow you'll be good, good to go for another workout, okay? So first what we're gonna do is we're gonna stretch our shoulders, okay? We're gonna just take your right arm, put it across your body, put a little pressure, and just hold it. Okay, now let's switch to the left arm. Right across your body, get a little pressure there. Hold it and stretch that shoulder. Very good. Okay, now we're gonna stretch your biceps tendon into your pectoral muscle, okay? So once you take your right arm, just put your hand like on your shoulder and just slowly get some pressure up there. And just raise your elbow nice and slow and hold it when you can feel that stretch. Very good, let's go left arm. Okay, just raise it up nice and slow to feel that stretch and hold it. Very good. Okay, now let's get a little loose. We'll get, I know your neck might be a little bit of sore, so we're just gonna get a little shoulder roll, okay? It's gonna help your shoulders, your neck, and the top half of your, of your uh, pectorals, right? Just kind of shrug in, hold, slowly, going back and forth. Good. Now let me turn to the side. What you're gonna do is you're gonna put your hands together and just kind of lean forward and get those arms out. Don't go too far back until you just feel a good stretch. Good stretch right in your upper body. Very good. And now I'm gonna turn it over to Miss Reedy. Hey guys, all right, I know I'm sore, so let's keep that stretching workout going. All right, this time we're gonna do chest extensions. We're gonna reach back as far as we can, and we're gonna hold, and we're gonna release, bring them together. We're gonna to do it again. I'm gonna repeat this a few times, again, for 30 seconds. Reach back, everything should be slowed, controlled, and not crazy painful. And release. One more time. And release. All right, good. All right, next one we're gonna do is our side stretch. We're gonna take our shoulder and our elbow and we're gonna kinda keep our hips squared to the screen and just twist the upper body. I know yesterday's workout was hard, but it was a good one. And this is a good sore that you're feeling today. It means you're definitely working your muscles, working them hard, switch, um, getting them stronger, getting them a little toned. All right, good. Okay, the next one is my favorite. It's my wake up in the morning stretch. I'm just gonna reach and really stretch our arms and our back. Right, the other side. So I'm sitting, I'm gonna add a little lean in because my lower back has been hurting. Can even lean 
back a little bit if you want. All right, good. All right, next one is gonna be our tricep stretch. You're gonna put your head over your shoulder. You're gonna pull your elbow, keeping your hand that's behind your head flat on your back. Good, switch. Last one is just, we're gonna extend our arms straight out. And we're gonna kind of point our palms away from our body, almost like a cat stretch with your back. And kind of, again, roll it a little bit if you want. It's kind of your preference. I don't know how sore you are, but you can even kind of, again, for the lower back. Take 30 more seconds and do one more stretch that it would feel good to your sore muscles. All right, we look forward to seeing you guys back in the Zoom rooms. So make sure you're turning in your work, recording, um, and reach out if you, don't if you have questions. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Enrichment TV, Gators. Remember, work hard, be nice, and we'll see you tomorrow.